We're sitting in the sanctuary of Metropolitan Community Church of Portland, just following a very exciting, spiritual, powerful, and uplifting worship service, yes, celebrating the 30th anniversary of Metropolitan Community Church of Portland. And all of the various pastors over the years who have pastored this church were here for this momentous occasion, and one of them is sitting next to me right here, Reverend Dolores Berry, yes. and um, who has is basically was pastor of this church for uh, how long? About a year. About a, a year time. or so. 22 years ago. 22 years ago was pastor here at yes. MCC Portland and Dolores travels all over the country as no, a no, singer. All as over a, the world. All over the world, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> International celebrity here. <laughs> and uh, but uh, Dolores travels all over the world with a fantastic ministry of music, of singing. And um, I've used some of her songs on the credit role of my show in the past mm -hmm. and so we're just going to kind of reminisce a little bit. Were you a minister before you came into MCC? Yes. I had been in the Methodist, Methodist Church clergy oh. for mm -hmm. about five years. Oh. So yes. And um, so uh, is the, did you pastor many churches with MCC? Yes. I became... pastored, I was assistant pastor in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I pastored Newport News Virginia Church. I pastored Norfolk Virginia Church and I pastored in the entire district at one point. I was the district coordinator mm -hmm. of about 20 churches. And then I came here. And once I pastored here, uh, I began to get a greater sense of knowledge of who I was called to be and do. And so I started um, ministry in an evangelist uh, capacity in UFMCC. And I preach, I teach, and I sing. And it is this church, this fellowship, that is my breath. Your very this life. Paul mm -hmm. is my breath. And I love it. I've never regretted staying. You found who you know who you are and the whole person. Yes. Body, soul, and spirit. I'm still learning. But you know, my birthday's coming. Oh, we're always still learning. On February you know. the 15th, I celebrate. I'll be 55. And oh, and I don't know, for at least 15 years on my birthday, I walk up to someone who looks like us mm -hmm. and I say, Hi, are you as queer as I am? Really? To the stranger. <laughs> and they usually like go, eh, and then sometimes they say, Yes, yes, and start laughing. Mm -hmm. But now, every now and then, I get someone and I ask them that question and they'll say, No. And I wait a little tiny bit and I say, have you ever been asked that before? And they go, yeah. That's an okay, fine. Traveling all over the world, have you had times when um, you've been really tired and felt like you wanted to take a rest and you'd look at the calendar and say, oh, I'm committed to be at this place at a certain time. I really don't want to go. But yet you would go anyway. And then once you got there, you were just so blessed. Do you think that God sometimes gives you an extra blessing yeah, when you go, even when you're that. not, even when you don't feel like it? Yes, I believe that God does that. And you, yeah, there are times when I'm like, I mean, we're talking about 50 church visits. Mm -hmm. So there are times where I would rather stay home. But you know, I'm learning that, that, I mean it when I say that the people that I meet are like the healing balm of Gilead. Mm -hmm. Because I do get energized from being around you. I do get energized by being a part of this denomination and to be a part of the greater communities. So yes, I, but I have never felt like I wanted to quit completely. Oh quit, no, no. Um, doing this 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 call that I live, but uh, sometimes it's harder. Sometimes it's hard to go, and sometimes it's hard to leave. Mm -hmm. We were just in England in August. We were there for about uh, three and a half weeks, and we visited the churches in Bath, North London, East London. Um, Brighton, oh my goodness, uh, I, and, I'm, and uh, there were several others. And a part of me still there. It's often said that the work of an evangelist sometimes is the loneliest aspect there is in the gospel yeah, ministry. But see now, I have my sweetie. You have, you have a partner that I goes with Judy you. Judy Kaiser yeah. is my mm -hmm. spouse, and February the 1st will be 22 years. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I know that. you do. Mm -hmm. And um, we do this call together. 
and that helps a whole lot. Uh, but I have a hard time meeting strangers. I, don't, I, I have to watch myself. I talk like Troy was saying. <laughs> his spouse said yeah, about him it. I talking love that. to anyone. Yeah. I talk to anyone, mm -hmm. and I start out assuming that everyone is gay, lesbian, transgender, or bisexual. And then they have to tell me if they're not. Mm -hmm. But I just take. Well, it if they say no, they're heterosexual. You don't hold that against no, them. You don't. I you're don't. The, you know. You're. I think one of the. You know. I don't <laughs> you're mind. Not my best friend is heterosexual. Some of my best friends are straight. Some of yeah. them. <laughs> but um, I think we have a call to the heterosexual community. Mm -hmm. I think that call is that we have to help them not hate us right so that they can also go to heaven mm. i believe that the heterosexual people who hate us are jeopardizing paradise for themselves good point well i'm just so happy that that i could be here and have this time with you and have this time with you i thank god that you've turned to the station i thank god that you are daring to hope you are the Giants. It's easy to be 400, 500, 800, 1,000 people, but in what you do in this ministry and what you seek as a, as a person, uh, it makes you the giant. You, you're standing there, or you're sitting there on your bed, you're sitting there in a chair, you're laying down, you feel good, you don't feel good. You feel isolated, you feel unloved, unlovable. Any of those types of feelings that you have, we've known how to overcome them because of evangelists like you, uh, our founder and evangelist, Reverend Troy Amen. D. Perry, the pastor here in Portland, Reverend Shepherd. But the main thing that I want you to know is that we believe in you and we will use whatever media we have to use so that you can know you are not dirty you are not unlovable and you are not by yourself so the next time i come through i'm going to hook up again with sister paula with the gentlemen and the women, the women who are, have helped us do this today, and and we will see you. You know what? You're going to get to a point where you're not going to be afraid to step in the door. You're going to come in here. So I'm either going to see you face to face, or I'm going to see you camera to face, <laughs> or I'm going to see you rainbow to rainbow. You know, if you're growing your wings and you're too ill to come out, or you've learned that you're HIV, or you've been told you had cancer, or any other illness that tries to snatch our breath away, we want you to know that God knows who you are and cares, and it's going to be all right. Man. That's what I want you to know. On my way home, Lord.